Hello students and welcome to section 1.4 where we are going to be talking about estimating and number sense. So educated guesses and estimations. Guessing does not mean just throwing out a random answer and hoping you're correct. Instead, we use the information we know to be true and some reasoning ability. Especially when we think about mathematics, if we're trying to make an educated guess about something. Um, you know, I'm certainly not going to just throw out the first thing that comes to mind, but I'm going to try to think about it, analyze the situation, um, and make what we call an educated guess. Let's think about an example outside of the math classroom. Let's say I look out the window and I want to predict what I think the weather is going to be today. Um, if it is the middle of June in North Carolina and it is nice and sunny outside, it would not be a very good educated guess for me to say, oh, I think I need to wear my pea coat because it's gonna be super cold today, right? That doesn't really make sense. But an educated guess would be, well, we're in North Carolina, it's June, the sun is shining outside, that means it's probably warm, it means it's probably gonna be a hot day as the sun starts to go higher into the sky, its rays are gonna get stronger. You know what, it's summertime, I probably should maybe wear a t-shirt and some shorts, right? That's an educated guess. I'm using some reasoning ability, looking at the entire situation and making an approximation or a guess based off of what I know. And the same thing occurs when we're doing estimated guesses in math. Now thinking about educated guesses and estimations, it's often the case that we can figure out some likely wrong answers even when we have no idea how to find the right answer. So have you ever thought about going backwards? Like, you know, maybe you don't know how to put the key into the keyhole or you don't know which key is the correct key, so you just go through all of them, right, to go figure out which one works. It's kind of a very backwards way, maybe not always the most productive way, but it still helps you get to the answer. When we narrow our options in this way, we give ourselves a better chance of guessing correctly when we finally do guess. In order to narrow our options effectively though, we actually have to have studied this in advance. This is not something that you just know how to do. So when I really think about this, it reminds me way, 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 way back when um, you know, we were taking tests such as the SAT or the ACT. And let's pretend we were dealing with a problem that said, you know, Billy uh, wanted to buy an item for $50 and it was on sale for 20% off. Um, so the original, I'll write this down for you, the original, original price is $50 and it's on sale for 20% off. Now, because we already studied percentages, you all know the answer. But let's say that I have um, some multiple choice responses, right? And I have some number here, and I have some number here, and some number here. And let's just pretend I have um, $75 here, okay? I'm, I'm not giving you numbers because it defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to prove. What I'm trying to show you here is... You know, you may not recall how to find 20% off of 50, but you can make an educated guess um, by doing the process of elimination, which is this first statement where it is often the case that we can figure out wrong answers. Well, if the original price is $50 and it's on sale, that means I'm gonna end up spending less than $50, right? So choice B, which is more than $50, doesn't make sense. So I could start out by eliminating that choice and now I just have to consider, okay, A, C, and D. So this is a good way to go about the answer. Even if I still don't know how to figure it out, at least now I have you know, a better chance of getting the problem right than I originally did when I had you know, four choices to select from. So estimation, does the problem contain the word approximately or something similar? Are the numerical answer choices decently far apart? Is there a diagram or could you draw one that would allow you to estimate? Can you assess things in terms of more than half versus less than half? So it works well on probability, sets, rates, works, fractions, percents. Um, can you assess things in terms of positive versus negative or greater than one versus less than one? Um, these are great times or great examples of problems when estimation could come in handy. Um, when that's not a 
not an option. Another technique is to try the answer. So this works really well when you have multiple choice problems. So are the answers generally small and easy numbers to work with? Well, then try them in the problem. Test, a lot of times say to start with B or D. After every choice, if that choice is wrong, try to determine whether you need a larger or smaller number. For example, let's say that we try B first. It's wrong, and we can also tell that we need a larger number. So if A is smaller, then we know that A can't be an answer. So then we go to B, uh, go to D, excuse me, we go to D. Well, it's wrong too, um, and it's too large, we need a smaller number. So by process of elimination, it's C, we can go ahead and check it and then verify that we believe it's the right answer. So there's a lot of different techniques to go about, um, you know, test or mathematical problems, even if you're not 100% sure about the answer. Um, another technique is to pick numbers. So are there variable expressions in the answers? Try picking your own easy numbers to find an answer that works. Even if you find that two answers work, which happens sometimes, at least you've narrowed that down to two. So let's start out with just something kind of hopefully a little simpler. Let's say I say um, x plus 7 is equal to 10. Um, you know, algebraically, we could use the inverse operation, which is subtraction, subtract 7 from both sides, and then figure out what the value of x is. But let's say you completely forgot your algebra, not sure how to do that. Well, the process of elimination, I could say, okay, let me, or I guess it's not elimination, excuse me, it's more of picking numbers. I could say, all right, well, let me try to plug in x equals 2. What happens when I do that? Well, 7 plus 2 is 9. Oh, wow, I'm only one away from what I need, so let me do x equals 3. And sure enough, when I do 3 plus 7, it gets 10. So I just choose um, various numbers and see what brings me closer and closer to the correct solution. When will you need to make educated guesses? Um, the SAT, ACT, you've already taken those. If you're going to grad school, the GRE, the GMAT, if you um, desire to be a lawyer or attorney, the bar exam, and honestly, any standardized task. Like, I am a firm believer that you're never going to 100% know um, every single answer on a test that you take. And sometimes making these educated guesses is really, really important. Um, I also think about educated guesses as sometimes listening to your gut, right? So in, in everyday life outside of math, we run into situations all the time where we have to look at our surrounding, analyze what's happening. A lot of times your gut is pushing you towards a particular decision, and then you use all of that to make your educated decision. There's an activity um, in page 45 in your textbook, and I highly encourage you to pause this video, go look at that activity, and try to complete it. Um, I am going to continue on with this example and provide you with the answers, but again, it's not really beneficial if you just listen to me talk about it. It's a lot better if you actually just try and go to do it by yourself um, by pausing this video and then coming back to see if your answers are correct. So an isotherm is a curve on a map that connects locations where the temperature is the same. Use the map below to estimate the temperature of each city. So you may not have the same exact answers, but you should be fairly close and more so be able to justify why you put a particular value down. So for the very first one, L, I see that L is, let's see, I'm going to get a highlighter here. Let's do a red. I see L is right here, and that is actually on the line of 40, so I'm going to estimate this at 40, and I'm pretty sure that's not really an estimate because it's really on the line, so it probably is 40. Um, and I guess I should use our measurement 40 degrees. Looking for point P that is below it, um, I see that it is uh, below 40 but it's above 50 but it's also closer to 50 um, I can tell that if I imagine like where 45 is which would be the middle it's below 45 so somewhere between 45 and 50 so I would say about maybe like 48 would be a good um, degree guess Looking at D, um, D looks perfectly in the middle of 20 and 30 in my opinion so I'm going to guess 25 degrees when I look at S, um, S looks literally just uh, below the middle a little bit, um, you know, a little closer to 10 degrees. So I'm going to guess about 7 degrees. Atlanta, Georgia, A here, it's closer to 30. 
um, not, not quite in the middle. It's still above the middle a little bit. So I guess I would do like maybe 32, 33 degrees. Um, looking at M, it's really close to 50 degrees, but it is slightly below. So maybe I'll put, you know, 51 or 52, I think would be reasonable. And then N, I'm in the negative values, but that's really close to zero. So I would put like negative one degree. And again, remember, you may not have the exact answers as me, but you should be pretty close and you should be able to justify why you chose um, the respective values. As always, I hope you found this video helpful. Hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.